We are very glad that you decided to join us today with me. I do have Alberto Lugo. He's the CEO of Invid and Puerto Rico, as he mentioned. And I'm Dave Lowe. I'm your Gov Brief host. Today, we want to welcome everybody that's, what a hot topic we got here. I tell you what, Alberto, I wasn't sure what it was going to, what it was going to be like this time of year, but I tell you what, a lot of folks interested in finding out about SharePoint best practices. So we have folks, we have actually two different folks from OIG. So either we're in big trouble or they have a problem. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's that. All right. So we just want to welcome you guys here today. Welcome. Uh, we will go through the some some introductions briefing controls talk about some agency issues and challenges some best practices get into some q a with you and uh, some recommended action steps and get you uh, some additional resources if you need it if you have been living under a rather large rock and have not been in a virtual meeting in the past three months well we'll show you how this works in the briefing you can grab that little uh control or maybe on the bottom could be on the sides or the top but you will grab this little arm and you can make us larger or smaller you can make us disappear and do death by powerpoint if you want to <laughs> and you can also open that panel you can engage with us we do have a handout it is not there uh it will be the presentation we'll drop that in there for you and if you want to engage with us you can raise your hand and you can chat us questions throughout this if you call it in on the phone, which a lot of folks do, you need to put in your pins. So we can unmute you and then we can dialogue back and forth. And it works that way. And throughout this whole thing, if you would take something offline or if you can't get in any other way, you can do it at GovSupport at InvidGroup.com and we'll make sure we get your questions answered. Quick disclaimer. This is from GSA. Uh, we've been doing this for six and a half years now, Alberto, if you can believe that. But this event is not affiliated or endorsed by GSA or any agency. It's provided to you, government folks uh, and the audience, for informational purposes only. All participation in this briefing is voluntary and engagement dialogue with you by government personnel is not an indication or endorsement of or commitment to purchase from any vendor, including Invid. And that's why we do that, so we can make sure that you guys can dialogue. We can also answer polls. And we have several polls here today. So why are you here today? Are you new to SharePoint and you want to learn more? Have you been tasked with SharePoint, a SharePoint project? Or do you need to implement automation use in SharePoint? Or do you need to develop applications, integrate with with SharePoint. There we go. Or your boss made me come. Somebody's got to pick that up. Oh, we got a bunch of folks already that said her boss made me come. Love it, love it, love it. So we were we're going to tell you a little bit about Invid in just a minute and uh, and get you associated. So with that, if some a lot of folks been tasked. Ah, oh, nice. We'll give you another five, four, three. Polls are painless, folks. You can do it. It's okay. Three, two, one anybody slipping it under the radar oh there it is uh, ah, there are a couple of them there we go all right so here we go this is what we got a bunch of folks have been tasked with sharepoint project management and automation and developing applications gotta love that right you still there alberto you with me yeah i'm here yeah all right <laughs> So I know that you have been working with Invid for many years. So tell me about Invid and what you do and why you started this thing. So at Invid, we automate processes uh, by using technology. We simplify process, we automate workflow, and we measure results. That's what we do. And we're based in Puerto Rico. We have a sales office in Crystal City right next to you guys. <laughs> and uh, we are a full service IT company. We specialize in SharePoint and Microsoft tools, but we also do custom software development. And yep, we yep. have a GSA schedule fr fresh out of the oven uh, <laughs> that we acquired a few months ago, and we are eager to use that. Uh, more on, on, on Invid, uh, we've been an 8A since 2016. We are an MBE since 2016 and DBE. So all those socioeconomic certifications we have acquired over the years were soon uh, and very close to getting the hub zone in the next few months. And we also have been a Microsoft Gold partner since 2004, which means that we have a lot of experience working with them as a preferred vendor on the, on the region. That's fantastic. And this isn't just with SharePoint, you do some other things too. So give us a, a high level overview so they know that you, 
how you interconnect with these things? Yeah, as I told you, we simplify process and uh, automate uh, workflow. So how do we do it? We, we do enterprise software. We couple that with mobile applications and web portals. And at the end, uh, we also do a lot of intranets and portals, which is uh, what SharePoint is, is, is capable of doing, one of the things that it can do. That, that's fantastic. And you have some of the best headshots. Your photographer is really, really good. Makes you look like Superman and all kind of great stuff. But we do know a little bit more about you, and that is you're a software engineer. So I, that that's a given. So you're a propeller head. We'll, we'll leave that alone. Uh, 20 years with SharePoint, but you also love the kite surf. And boom, there he is doing his thing. <laughs> Can't believe you have that picture. Uh, yeah, that, being from the Caribbean, I love to kite surf. That's one of the things uh, the government hasn't locked down yet. So I can go, I can go and exercise still. To totally socially distanced when you're doing a kite surf, right? That's Real, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. God bless you, man. I'm not doing that stuff. I'm, those 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 days are behind me. But anyhow. Uh, you help folks simplify, simplify, automate, and measure. And I think this is really important because a lot of folks do pieces of that, uh, but measurement is, is critically important. And so, so let me tell you the, something, let let me tell you something uh, Dave. When, when we get asked for a quote or for a project, sometimes the client wants to automate a process without thinking about the process itself. So it's it's very important to look at the process and try to simplify it as much as you can. Moreover, uh, these times where the corona has people working from home, so the processes has to be looked at, how can I improve it and simplify it before automating it? All right, One. so what are you using right now? If you're using uh, Microsoft Office 365, Obviously, there's a lot of flexibility in Office 365. So are you using Exchange, SharePoint, uh, Teams? A lot of folks using Teams right now because it comes with sure. it. Did you? That, right? It comes with it, right? Yeah. All right. And Power Apps is another part. And then Yammer. This is a new one on me. So you're going to have to explain what Yammer is. Yep. We'll do so in a minute. So we will do that. So uh, we'll give you another five. I love it. Everybody so far is using SharePoint online. Fantastic. So we're giving up four, three, two, one. Anybody else want to squeak in under the line? And oh, bam. All right. So there's there's what we got. 50% awesome. using Exchange. This is Eight. awesome. Nobody's, nobody's using Yammer. Ah, nice. See that? All right. Well, we're going to learn about that. So I need a little bit of education on that there. <laughs> All right, so let, take us through what the common situations are. All right, so why we wanted to do this webinar. A lot of folks that we uh, meet with in the, in the government and other agencies and other uh, segments have told us that they have subscribed to Office 365 just to migrate Exchange because they didn't want to have or they don't want to have those servers in-house. And the second group of people own SharePoint, but they're not fully using it as they should. They're only archiving documents and, and not using the workflow capabilities, and they're not creating applications on top of SharePoint. Um, some of them are still using SharePoint Server on-premise, which is uh, it's, it's another variation of the software, but not using Office 365. And then a lot of people are not using Yammer, as you saw in the in the in the question that you just did. Teams, Planner, OneDrive. So there's a a, a whole uh, array of software that you are paying for, and then you are paying other companies to use their software because you don't know it exists, right? And that's what we're here for. You're paying for a subscription, and you're not using the software that you're paying for. Yep. So let's talk about life. Life without collaboration. I love these. These are these are fantastic. Using email yeah. for everything. I mean, uh, email is not going to die anytime anytime soon, but uh, people sometimes abuse it, and they start communicating through email and going back and forth when they should be using Teams. They could be using Yammer. Yammer is a social network very similar to Facebook, but it's for internal use. Only your employees and the people in your network can use it. So you could write stuff more freely than if you're using Facebook. 
And some of the time you don't have to use the email. You can be using these tools to communicate with your peers and really uh, not be not abusing the software. Yeah. Um, the other the other common situation is that people save the documents locally on their machine and they're not saving it to the cloud. And sometimes the computer gets messed up and they don't have backup of, the, of those files. This one I know you do a lot because I work with you for a while. <laughs> And I resemble uh, using, that's what he's saying. They don't use versioning control. When you use SharePoint, you can have as many versions of a file as you want, major and minor versions, and you can check in and check out that document so other people don't mess with it, but you don't have to rename the file. So you can travel in the time. For example, you can go back in time and go to the first version of the of the of the file and really compare what change and who made that change. And you can see everything side by side without having to rename the file with another file name. And most people don't know that they can do that. That's and true. then again, manual processes. They are still sending that email for approval instead of getting or collecting that electronic signature and all that. I like this, working out loud. So yeah, we, we came up with this um, slogan because uh, we really want people to automate their processes and start letting other people in the office know what they are doing, right? Share your PowerPoint, share your Word document with your peers. So this is the evolution of the communication, right? You start with the pigeon, then you Morse code, the telephone, fax, beeper, email. And now we're going through social and we're using Teams and, and other sort of electronic communications. So this is the vision of the modern workplace. You don't have to send that email. You can chat with, the, with your peers through, through Teams. You can uh, turn on your camera and have a conversation like we are doing right now. You can, uh, through the internet, you can send electronic forms and you can use Power Apps and Power Automate to automate those, those processes without having to sign that physical paper. Uh, you can post information through Yammer, as I, as I was saying. You can have your CRM with your clients or your services when you're attending other people and you can see what's going on and other peers can see what you're doing with a specific citizen or client uh, by using CRM. You can manage projects using SharePoint and other tools. And then you can customize solutions and you can create different workflows by using Power Apps and, and the workflow that comes integrated with SharePoint. So I like this slide and we were talking about offline before we, were, we, we started this uh, uh, presentation because I always compare SharePoint to a Swiss Army knife and Microsoft does the same thing. They do the same thing because you can do so much with uh, the product. That's why uh, we stated before that most people are underutilizing the licenses because most people are doing document management, but you can do so much more. You can collaborate, you can store data in list and, and document management. You can create web content management places where, so you can create your website using SharePoint. And we do have a bunch of clients that have used SharePoint in the past to create their their, their public facing website. And then you can have your intranet, you can have your extranet because you can communicate with vendors. So you can, uh, for example, we share some information by using OneDrive and Dropbox, but you could have an extranet where your vendors can communicate with you and post information and you would have it in the same structure as your internal file system. And then you can have write management. So if you send a, an email, or you send some documents to the wrong person, you can have write management and they will be able to forward it or you're, they won't be available to forward the information and open it if they, they're not the audience intended for that specific document and so many other features. So this is an out of the box SharePoint. This is what you get when you uh, purchase a, a license of Office 365. And now I wanna go to the next one so you can see how you can, I, I would say how you can really customize the end user graphic design of this of this internet. We're having the, the menu of the day for the people that are coming in. We have the birthday list, you have the, the most search for documents in the enterprise, and then you can have a bunch of links to different systems. So this is really like the hub where your employees can come in and, and start working every day. 
from, from the top menu, you can select different web forms that you can be filling and sending for approval. So you have everything in the hub. And look at the difference between the back, the, the, first, the first slide and the second slide, how you can beautify the, the different uh, SharePoint sites that you are using. This is another example with uh, NPR Pharmaceuticals, how they chose to customize the, with, the, with the colors of the company. And there you can see how the web form transformed to the mobile uh, form. So you can use it anywhere on any device. And if you keep going forward, you can see a bunch of different flavors, how, how you can customize very easily. So we provide uh, custom templates and you can either hire us so we can uh, customize the templates for you or you can go in with uh, what you see what is what you get uh, editor where you can include your logo, include the, the colors and customize it. So it's, it's either or. You can do it yourself or you can hire us to customize your SharePoint experience. And it's it's pretty intuitive, right? That that uh, once once you start to understand how the workflow works within the within the layout, um, it's not it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a programmer. That's what the beautiful yeah. thing. It doesn't take a programmer. And we have simplified we have simplified the the way that you customize these templates. So you can change the color yourself. You can change the logos yourself. You can drag and drop information throughout the internet portal. So it's very easy to customize. And this is where we get into some of the the real nuts and bolts of diving deeper into into Office 365 and SharePoint. Uh, so tell us about this. So this is this is the the real where the where the power comes when you want to automate a process using SharePoint and Power Apps. The Power Platform was launched a few years ago, and it it's four things, right? It's Power Apps, which is the Substitute for many people that are using still uh, InfoPath forms, Power Apps comes to substitute InfoPath forms and then some. You can create a whole bunch of forms and automate processes using Power Apps, Power Automate, which is workflow um, automation. And then you can measure results using Power BI, which is graphics for the different data sources that you have on your, on your company. And at the end, we have the Power Virtual Agent, which is a, a real, really um, a chatbot that it's uh, that you can customize, so it can answer questions throughout your internet or by using Microsoft Teams. So here you go. These are some of the of the benefits of using Power Apps. There's a no-code development tool, so a Power user can come in and learn how to use it, and they can start creating forms and automating processes. The skill level is really like writing formulas on Excel, which is not programming. And it's an InfoPath alternative. I know from the past webinar we did, there was a lot of folks still using uh, InfoPath. And one of the things that uh, Microsoft will end the, the, I don't like to use the end of life because, you know, but it's they, they're going to shut down the support for this software in 2026. So folks are, are they need to start looking for a solution or an alternative, which uh, Power Apps uh, can be one. Well. Power Automate, you can, it's a workflow tool really, and it's a graphical interface. Again, you don't need to be a programmer to set up a workflow. You can create a form using Power Apps, and then you can automate and request signatures and request, and request approval, send email to different people by just clicking and drag and dropping uh, different functionalities on the on the software on the on the uh, on the tool. Uh, it use a common data service, so if you want to know who the supervisor of this employee is, you can drag and drop a box and really select that information from Office 365. So if you know the who the supervisor is by using Office 365, you can send an email without having to code or by having to select anything else. And there's all sort of third-party connectors. There's like a hundred of them, and you can connect to different software such as Salesforce, HubSpot, and others. Sorry, I had to disappear for a second. <laughs> and then Power BI, as I was saying, it's a reporting tool. You can connect to multiple data sources, and and it's a free desktop app. Uh, the only the only thing that it's going to be uh, capable of doing in the free version is that you're going to have to refresh the information every 24 hours. 
if you want to refresh that information more com more frequently, uh, there's there's a license for that. <laughs> So yeah, if you if you want to go and show some of the examples that we have for workflow automation, I can I can share with with you the um, some of the examples that we have we have talked in the past. Um, business software is hard, man. I love There's yeah. nothing about even even when it's even when it's simplified because once you start putting your business processes on top of whatever you want them to do it incorporates it into your business software and it's never easy it just is never easy and obviously there's a lot of push with the federal government to go into the cots world and this is cots by the way this is cots yeah. however is, yeah. usage of it becomes is when it's, you start to customize and, and get into a place so when you're talking about obviously there's no budget constraints ever in the federal government right Everybody's here. <laughs> of course there is. And time resource constraints, everybody has extra time. And, bu so, and business expectations, your boss's expectations are always reasonable in yeah. the federal government. Obviously, <laughs> we're, we're not talking about your particular agency. And not that you have any paper processes left. No way. There's no way. But no, it actually gets complicated and you have to have communication and getting that collaboration to get things working and that goes into what what we're talking about here collaborating between it and your business processes all of that gets thrown in there so, as well. so if you stay here for a second yeah, this is the, we are building the case for using a low code software to create your or automate your process right you have budget constraints everybody has them you have time and resource limits or constraints there's business expect expectations we need this for next month and you know when you're creating a software it takes a, a, a long time to really analyze create the software test it so this is the business case for really going after automating processes using low code or no code software uh, you want to automate paper process this the process is too complex so we want to simplify you want to have that communication between it and the business uh, uh, people or you want to uh, convert legacy systems or eliminate legacy systems and really automate software or workflow uh, in, a, in a quick manner. So this is really building the case for using low code programming or no programming at all by using these tools. Yep, yep. And, and there's uh, there could be a couple of legacy programs out there that these folks have to deal with. Mm -hmm. I'm just joking because we know that they're all over the place. Do you have Power Apps in your Office 365 subscription? This is an easy one, folks. Everybody can answer it. It's yes, no, or not sure. All right, let's go. Let's see what you got. So this there's, a, there's a lot of people that don't know that they have Power Apps in their subscriptions, and some people are paying for, them, for it. There's a few instances where you get like a, a free version of the, of the platform to use uh, limited and uh that's why there's a lot of confusion with it yep yep so we'll give you another this is an easy one so everybody gets another five four three two one and boom here we go 54 percent yes 23 percent no and 23 percent not sure yeah the 23 percent that is not sure i don't blame you it's difficult sometimes you don't you're not the person that is buying the software so you don't really you don't know exactly and and that's beautiful so love this low code so, platform that's what this is all about right exactly reduce time to building business applications again this is this is making the case for for using something as power apps to automate process it's a cuts so it's commercial of the shell you have to customize it you can convert the licensing to an operational expense instead of a capital expense. You just need to pay for building or customizing the app, and then you can keep paying for the licenses in an operational manner. Um, you can extend your systems to, to simplify your process and remove silos because you're using information from different data sources. So sometimes you have silos of information and you, you're paying, as I was saying at the beginning of the presentation, you're paying for different tools that don't communicate with each other, but you can start pushing information from one place to another by using this type of software. 
uh, I, I like this this uh, slide because you can show how you can measure information in one part, how you can have mobile uh, the mobile workforce using the apps in their cell phone, and then you can see a whole bunch of different cases where you can use one thing to do one one thing, and then use a tablet or a PC to measure results. And then this is uh, this is repetitive from the from the last one. Uh, I want to I want to try to squeeze as much of the slides because we're running out yep. of time. Yep, I want to yep. show some of the examples and. Um, here, the, the 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 easiest thing that we can think of and that clients request all the time is the <laughs> vacation request or the leave request, right? Sometimes you're using another software for this or you're not integrating with your uh, main software for having the information stored. This is a, a quick example of a form created in Power Apps and then autom the automation created with Power, Power uh, Automate and then the graphics and the results of this input of information measure with Power BI. This is an example of a relief request. This leave request actually lives in Power Apps, but you can show it on Teams. So a person can go to Microsoft Teams and hit the button and request vacations from the interface. So they don't have to go to the intranet or they don't have to open Power Apps to see the vacation request. You can push the, this information to Microsoft Teams. And this is what we were talking about of really using the whole uh, software that you're paying for to automate a process. This is a room reservations power apps that we created for a local uh, college campus in Puerto Rico. Uh, what they are doing is they, they're pushing the reservation of the facilities through the through the intranet and by using a power app and you can use it by using your cell phone. I want to I want to add to this that this this wasn't as relevant the last when we we talked about this um, a few months ago, but with with COVID nineteen and reopening offices, you have a whole shuffling process that's happening between your employees and availability of space, and and social distancing and all those things. We're working with GSA on another aspect of, uh, of, of services we've seen uh, with, with office space as a service. And this, this really does apply in an area that you didn't think was going to apply four or five months ago, right? So and then Correct. you have devices, inventories, you have all different ways of being able to leverage the, the, interact, the interaction here. So tell us a little bit more about this. Correct. Again, this is another example of uh, a company or an agency that that need to have uh, the inventory of different devices. You can think of uh, uh, cars. You can see, think of. I, I saw the other day a, a requirement for a bullet control or, or gun control in one of the agencies. So you can think of anything that you can um, uh, that you can have in, in an inventory, and you can subtract. Uh, things when you are loaning them to an employee, for example, a laptop, and you can see when the uh, expiration date on the warranty is going to be, and you can trigger a workflow to the purchase agent so they can purchase more warranty on that device, or uh, when the end of life for that device comes up, you can really request that the employee returns it and you can buy another one. So again, this is another example of how you can see the information, how can you request the information and how you can uh, measure the results. Uh, this is for a local client. Again, this is an intranet uh, using SharePoint. And if you go to the next slide or to the some of the next slides, you're going to see um, the talent acquisition. When you need an employee in this company, you would request uh, the, or, or the requisition for a new employee and peers can refer friends for, for different job roles and if they hire that person that you are referring you you will get a small bonus so this is a software that we created using power apps and this is the the place where they are you you just saw the form where the employee would refer a friend and here you would see how the talent acquisition manager would interview and put the results of that effort before measuring if something happened with that resource. Again, this is for uh, distance learning request when you are gonna provide a, a webinar inside of this college campus, you will go into the software. This is again, a SharePoint internet site. 
and then you will go in and request information about the course that you want to take and here you're going to request access to that specific course and if it has a price you will pay for it using the platform and if you have like a coupon code you could redeem it and you, you don't have to pay for it. This is an internal project for a, a big college campus here in Puerto Rico. So again, we're trying to show different uh, examples of, of how you can automate different processes and measure results. And I know we're running out of time, Dave, so I want to yeah. try to jump into questions with the folks here. Yeah, we will we can be of assistance for any of the, of the questions they may have. We will absolutely get there. Just uh, let me get through here. So, um, we will get to your questions in one second. So I expect a SharePoint Power Apps requirement. We had we asked this question on the way in too, so we know that there's a lot of folks that are at, that are looking for this. <clears throat> Obviously, when you're dealing with licenses, you're dealing with a lot of stuff happening in year end. We talked about that just yesterday, as a matter of fact, on a gov brief. So there's a lot of things happening uh, with with licenses and renewals. But this actually is dealing with the SharePoint and apps requirement. If you need some, you expect to need some help to either understand how the, the SharePoint, SharePoint Power Apps work, or if you have a particular issue in being able to make those work. So with that, we'll give you another five, four, three, two, one, and Anybody else coming in under the wire? Yeah, we go a little bit, a little bit painless, more. Painless, quick pause. What's that? Painless. Painless, that's right. So there you go. Split it up. 10, 20, 20, 20, 30. <laughs> there you go. We got folks. We certainly have a bunch of folks that need it. All right. So open up that panel on the right hand side. You don't even have to open it up. You can raise your hand if you little see that little hand thing there and you can if you called in on the phone make sure that you enter your audio pin and you can also chat questions so i have a couple of questions here what's the best way to integrate with salesforce great great question very popular cloud-based crm now i think one of the slides talked about the different integrations with different data sources and salesforce mm -hmm. is one of them you can connect and get information from salesforce and then provide information back, or you can collect information and then uh, continue working with the workflow uh, by using SharePoint and Power Apps. All right, all right. And so um, we have an Oracle database application that needs to move to SQL. How do you integrate with that before, you, before you're before you moving to SQL? There, there, there's a lot of challenges with Oracle right now in different agencies. Uh, especially from a licensing standpoint. So, can you, can you repeat that question, please? Yep. We have an Oracle database that they're moving to SQL. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to do? You integrate with Oracle now? Can you? Well, can you? Yeah, Oracle is a relational database, as is SQL Server. So, if you're migrating, I would recommend waiting on that migration before integrating. But the answer is you can also connect to an oracle database it's just a relation <laughs> so how would you do that the, the so it's that robust that you can even connect to a disparate database correct you can connect to it to a relational database you can connect to an excel sheet you can connect to over a hundred different databases or data sources that they already created and then you can create your own data connections to different databases so it's really, it's really that easy. So does Yammer come with Office 365 all the time? Yes, uh, and, and again, there's a free version and there's a premium version. Um, I, would, I would have to send information on the different packages for Office 365, um, but it, it, it was strange that nobody in the, in the group of people seeing this webinar is using it. So it comes with your Office 365 subscription and it's a great way to communicate with your peers. We use it a lot in, in our company, more, more, even more so in these days that we are working remotely. Uh, we feel like we are more connected because we're sharing information and pictures and different ways of pe how people can be better at their work. And if we find useful information, we don't have to use email for that. We use we use uh, Yammer. Got it. 
Can you talk about some challenges when it comes to creating an extranet from a security perspective? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it all depends on how much access you want to give to your vendors or to your clients and how you want to share information with them in terms of, of, of communications. For example, we had some clients that have their intranet created in a box inside of their company and then they create another box in the in a in a DNC zone and then they connected the, the, those two databases through connections so you have limited information on the outside and then if you're using office 365 you might want to use a different uh, data source excuse me a uh, uh, um, um, you want to use a, a different data connection so you you had separated the the two the intranet and the extranet so you don't want to have everything in one in one source file did you get bruce did that answer that do you want to let me see if i can find bruce real, real quick it depends if you want to do on premise and if you want to do it online uh if you're going to do it online you i would have two different instances when i'm communicating through an extranet because i don't want to even give any access to an intranet portal absolutely hey bruce you there i refer to a vendor or a client ah, very good bruce said that word that answered the question very good yeah All and right. we had very both good. in the past we have done um when we are doing a server we put it in a dmc and we're doing it if we were doing it online we, we put it in a different data collection awesome and uh will there be a copy of the slides yes there will be a copy of the slides we'll talk about that in just a minute um <clears throat> we'll make sure you get a copy of those any other questions before we jump? Good stuff. Thank you very much, guys. That was that was good interaction. Always love that. Good interaction. Uh, so as far as staying out of hot water, it's one of my favorites. Plan, 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 automate what you can. That sounds like like uh, that should turn into some kind of uh, some kind of book or a preacher sermon or something. Plan, 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 automate what you can. Uh, follow best practice is always a good idea. And if, if you have any questions about that. Uh, you can reach out to to how much does it cost to talk to you by the way it's free free my favorite four letter word uh and accountability matters guess what we want to that's what the best part is you you have the ability as management or feed management so that people can be hold, held accountable and and embracing the improvement that includes automating these processes taking a little bit of time vet your vendors always a good idea we talked about that yesterday vetting your vendors especially times like now because a lot of people say they can do it i'm just not not necessarily in your particular agency you've never had any problems like this obviously but uh, has it ever had a vendor that said they could do it and then didn't or couldn't do it or couldn't uh, weren't authorized I want, I want to say something in terms of contracting. We are an 8A, and that means that you can go directly uh, with a work order with us up to a $4 million in, in, in the project uh, lump sum. And then uh, if you if you hire uh, any company for, based in Puerto Rico, you get double points on your uh, distress situation when, you, when you're hiring uh, companies that are 8A or a subset of that. We do have a GSA Schedule 70 uh, with fixed pricing, and then uh, we are just getting to the help zone in the next few weeks. So yep. we hope we have that certification very soon. And um, for service disabled, you have partners that run that you, you can do that with. So That's you can correct. reach out. You can reach out, and you guys will receive a recap email next week, which will include um, the a copy of the presentation a copy of the video so you can watch it over and over and over for the educational and the entertainment value that you get from this uh but yeah if you so you'll have a copy of that as well as um well uh, there's some folks asking for capabilities we'll make sure you get that do you have a line card as well what do you have a line card yeah. uh, like a list of all the software that you provide yeah we do we can provide you with that okay fantastic so with that, we just want to say thanks. Thanks for joining us. It's great to have you guys here. If you have any additional questions, you can reach Alberto. And he mentioned it doesn't cost a dime to give to, to give him a call and ask him questions. And he has a great team of folks. How many people? You hired like a ton of people recently. Yeah, we have about 40, 42 uh, people in the, in the company. And we are uh, hiring uh, 10 more in the next few weeks. So we're pushing 50 right now. 
Yep, pushing 50. And we're going to be talking in just a little bit, if you guys want to know uh, about Puerto Rico and what is it called? Nearshore? Near shore or outsource? Nearshore. If you want to know the difference between onshore, nearshore, and offshore, you can come at 1 p.m. And, you, and, and uh, Alberto has been asked to do a presentation on Puerto Rico and why Puerto Rico. And you mentioned a part of that. You get double points from Puerto Rico, but there's a whole bunch of other reasons pricing-wise that, that create a very effective. So if you guys want to know we more need, about that, you can join us at 1 p.m. We provide it in the U.S., but we, you want to save a little bit of money, you can uh, hire Puerto Rico. That's right, because you guys still can say, cha-ching, made in USA, right? It's all USA. Fantastic. Well, as usual, Alberto, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out, and we will see you next time. Thanks, folks.